morning, this is Tony Gonzalez, and here uh, we are with Mick Box, the leader, the guitar player, and the, on, the last stuntman in Uriah Hip in his long history, because Uriah Hip will release their 50 studio album called Chaos and Color. How are you, and how do you feel about this new CD? Well, uh, I'm fine, thank you. Um... Uh, very healthy, which is good, and uh, we've been out on tour, which is always a pleasure because that's our passion. Um, but Chaos and Color is our new album. Um, we recorded it um, in Chapel Studios where we did Live in the Dream with the same producer, Jay Rustin. And the reason we called it Chaos and Color was quite simply, um, you know, it was written in chaotic times when the COVID was about and the pandemic and, you know, um, the, the whole world was was thrown into to, to, to a complete mess, and so um, including our lives. So we, we we wrote it in that chaotic period, but we felt that the only pleasure, and I've been told this by many fans, the only pleasure or color in people's lives was the fact that it was music. So um, we called it color, and, you know, chaos and color, because that's exactly summed up the, the actual time it was written and recorded. It's interesting that some other bands uh, are living, living from the past only, but Uriah Hip is still producing new music. Is that you need to write new music? I think because um, it's born in you, you know, uh, you know, I'm a songwriter and I can't just stop and say, oh, well, that, that, that's enough. <laughs> you know, I just write every day, you know, and it, it's, a, it's a passion for me to do so. You know, whether I'm playing my guitar or writing a lyric or or it's just an idea, you know, um, I document it every day. And then um, when I get some time off at home, I'll sit down and go through all the ideas and pick out the ones I think that are really strong and, and develop them into, into you know, music. Um, it's, 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 you know, I don't think um, I'd ever be happy just playing the old songs because I think after a while you'll just get wear yourself down with that, you know, by bringing in new blood, if you like, new songs, it revitalizes the old ones too, um, when we play them live. So it's a very important part of, of your eye heap to keep looking forward and pushing forward, but also being very, very true to our heritage, which we love. Were all the songs written especially for this CD? Uh, who were the main songwriters in this recording? Well, normally it's just me and a keyboard player, Phil Lanz, and we know for the last oh, 30 years, it's just been us two writing the songs. But because of COVID, if there's anything good that came out of COVID, it gave the other guys a chance to sit down and get some songs together. So um, there's uh, three or four written by Russell Gilbrook and his, his friend Simon Pinto. There's one song, um, as was on Living the Dream, written by Dave Rimmer and Jeff Scott Soto, um, called Save You Tonight. Um, and the rest of them were written by me and Phil. It, it, it was, it was, it was a, an opportunity for people to actually get involved in the songwriting, which, which I'm really pleased about because it is more of a band um, album this time. Yes, it's not the first time that Jeff Scott Soto writes songs for Uriah Heep. Tell me how this collaboration started. Um, well, I think, I think um, to be honest, you know, we, 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 we have a sort of template to, to work within with your eye. I don't think we can slip outside of that and start rapping or something, you know, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we, 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 uh, we have a, uh, um, a template of album format, if you like, when we'll have, we'll have a ballad, we'll have a, a couple of progressive rock songs, we'll have short rock songs, we'll have, you know, all, all various stuff, you know, and so that, you know, it's, it's a nice travel through um, the listening of the album. Um, so once once we've got the idea that we're going to go in the album, you know, you know going to record an album, um, I've got a million ideas on guitar and, and uh, Phil's got a million ideas on keyboard and we put them together very quickly. And when we're in the same room, we bounce off each other really, really quickly and, and we write songs uh, reasonably quickly. But this time round, it's been a bit difficult because we had to do it on FaceTime and, and over the computer and uh, and it really, really was a slow process, you know, because you can't bounce off each other like that, you know, like, you know, like being in, in, in a room together. So it was a bit of a slow process, but nevertheless, the, the, the quality was there, the songs were there, so we were very happy with it, with it in the end. I would like to talk about some songs. And um, for example, uh, one of them is a song that to me is like a classical hip tune that is Age of Changes. 
this song spread optimism, even when uh, it maybe was written in the middle of the COVID. But the, the point that I want to ask you is, are you in charge of the vocal harmonies in song like this? So who write the, the vocal harmonies? Because it's the, the sign of the of Uraihi. Yeah, um, I think I think we all have a, a uh, well, basically if, on, on that particular song, it will be Phil and, Phil and myself. It's one of the elements of heat that has to be on an album. And, and, and that song really shows it off to its fullest, I think. Yeah, you're right there. And it is very heapy and, and, uh, and, and that's what we're going for, you know, and I think we achieved that. Even when in the story of the band, there are very, very important singers. I think that now Bernie Shaw is really the singer because he has been in the band for 35 years. <clears throat> and tell me, how important is for you having him in the band? I think, uh, you know, he's been there for that long, you know, he's, he's more than important, you know, he's, 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 made, he's made the vocal um, position his, you know, 100%, you know, and with his, his stage persona too. Um, and I think particularly on this album, I think he's raised the bar. I think this is his strongest vocals on all songs um, uh, on Chaos and Colour. I think he's really, really, really come to the fore now. And, uh, you know, that comes with confidence, exuberance, the, the love of doing what you that you do. And, and uh, he really connects with it. He's not a writer, but he has to connect with each song uh, before he can deliver it. And uh, I think on this album, he connected with each of those songs very, very well. And, and he, he delivered them great. Yes, so uh, all the people who follow the band maybe can consider that uh, David Byron era was pretty important. But I think that Bernie Shaw era is extraordinarily important for, for the band. When <clears throat> you and David Byron left Spice, could you imagine that more than 50 years later, you will be still writing and playing? Well, I don't think anyone could um, uh, think that far ahead, can they? <laughs> Um, but, you know, I'm very, very pleased I am, you know, because um, the one thing was for sure that I was going to be playing guitar and playing music for the rest of my life. Uh, I didn't know it would all be in Uriah Heap, but I've got no complaints there. You know, it's been a great vehicle for me to to express all my, my, my writing ability and my guitar playing. So, yeah, um, no, you, you can never you can never, ever, ever um, look that far ahead and think oh, I'll still be doing it. But I'm thankful that I am and um, I've got my health and I can continue to do so. I'm going to tell you a personal story, very brief. When I was young, I said, I'm a rocker. Maybe when I will be a 50, I left. And I will be 50, say, no, 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 Let, let's go. Uh, uh, keep, keep the rock alive until the 60. And now that I'm 61, I said, maybe, maybe at the 70, I will leave the, the rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm 75, so I... I'm keeping it rolling. <laughs> Have no fear. You've got a little way to go yet, but you'll catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I will follow your steps. Me. Yes, I will be a <laughs> till the day I die. <laughs> Good man. I'll, I'll be a pioneer for you. <laughs> yes. And Mick, it's true that when David Byron left the band, you thought in David Coverdale to replace it? Yeah, David Coverdale came to a, a rehearsal in John Henry's, I think it was. Um, in London and uh, he came down because he wasn't doing anything. And obviously we needed a, a, a vocalist and um, he came down, he was a fantastic. I mean, he just, he, his voice was fantastic. He's a very powerful person on the mic, you know, he had that persona, uh, that personality. Um, and when we finished the day, we said, okay, well, let's, let's, let's talk about it. You know, because we've got lots of things to, to discuss. Um, it's obviously going to work. and. And that though, at that moment, um, David Coverdale's manager just said, I've just got the finance together to, um, to form uh, White Snake. And of course, you know, that was his first love. So um, he, he went off and did that and of course made it very, very successful. Um, but yeah, he was there for a little while, but you know, it, it just didn't work out for those reasons. I remember that when a Very Heavy, Very Humble was released, part of the critics say that you were a copy of Deep Purple. A hip and purple fan sometimes are the same people. Why do you think this happened? I, I think the, the only thing that happened was that we came out about the same time. We both have an, an, had an Hammond organ. 
and and um, we played loud music, and that was about as far as it got, you know. I mean, Deep Purple took a very virtuoso route, you know, with long solos and stuff with Richie, which were all fantastic. John and Lord, great, fantastic players, and um, they and we went kind of went the song route, if you like, you know, um, and um, so it's a di- and, and also we had five harmonies. You know, five singers and, and and Purple only had one with Ian. You know, as good as he was, but we had five. And uh, I think you know, if you, if you listen to the music, there's no comparison at all. You know, there was never any competition with the with with the bands at all. We were all just mess, best of mates. You know, and we had a great respect for each other. And it was a time where you were just creating your own vibe. You know, in the industry, so it, it was never any competition that that came from outside. You know, media and stuff like that. Now that you talk about the, the guitar solos and the solos, uh, I remember I saw the band, for example, at Hellfest and, <clears throat> and later at Legend of the Rock before the COVID. And uh, I remember you that in some moments, I feel that you are inspired and you make long guitar solos, extraordinary guitar solos. And tell me, did you prepare the guitar solos, the guitar solos that are different in concert than in the recording? Did you prepare it or is that you uh, release your soul and are free? I tend to, um, to, because people listen so intently to our music on, 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 on whatever vinyl, CD or whatever uh, mean that they listen on it, I, I, I tend to stay pretty true to the solo because that's what they, they hear and that's what touches their soul and communicates with them. But occasionally I'll just, you know, throw another little lick in or something, a little inflection and stuff, you know. Um, and and uh, but, but I don't really stray too far away from what, what's on the record because I, I feel that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, let me tell you that I thought that there, some of them are really different, but it's maybe sometimes. Oh, really? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe you caught us on, a, on one of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> you release uh, the first single. That is the first track from the CD. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking of uh, releasing another single before releasing the CD? Um, I'm not sure. That's, that's, usually it's down to the record company, mm-hmm. to be fair. But I think the one single being released now, uh, it'll have enough time to, to breathe until this, the actual album comes out. So I should imagine there will be another second single. Yes, for sure. But um, whether it comes out after the release or before, that's really down to the record company. Uh, in the past, the band plays some covers, for example, Hold Your Hair Up, uh, Love Is Blind. And then in this uh, CD, when I see a song entitled Fly Like an Eagle, I imagine for a moment the Steve Miller band classic. Tell me, what is the feeling or, or the meaning in Fly Like an Eagle? Fly Like an Eagle, oh, that, that's, that's uh, one of uh, Rossi and, and Simon Pinter's um songs on the album and it's, it's about meditation the whole thing's about meditation um even though it's got an edgy riff to it it's it's it is all about meditation uh, it was a did you write that song no no it's uh russell gilbrook and simon pinto um a friend of a guitar friend of his wrote that song another critic who listened to this cd say that this CD is uh, better than the last three or four CDs. It's an extraordinary CD. I consider that it's an extraordinary CD. And I remember uh, the song, Hail the Sunrise, Hail mm-hmm. the Sunrise, and something, something that I see is that is Uriah Hip all the time. Right, well, well that's good, that's good. Well, I mean, again, that's another one of Russell and, uh, and um, Simon Pinto's songs. And I think what he was trying to do with that particular song was get an earthy riff, like Gypsy was a very earthy, simple riff, but it communicated with lots of people. And I think How the Sunrise has got that same earthiness in that riff. And I think that's where, where he was going with that, you know. But, uh, yeah, he's got some good, he's got some good musical points there. And... Uh, And uh, certain people have said that the solo is really great on that one. So, you know, it, it seems to be making its mark. All are good songs, but some of them are more closer to the people you know, that you write the songs and play, 
And the people mm -hmm. pay a sum from himself or themselves. Is there a sum that uh, you wrote and it will be misunderstood? Be misunderstood? Misunderstood, yes, the meaning? Oh, no, no, I think our lyrics are quite, um, uh, quite easy to read. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we generally have very positive lyrics, you know. Um, I think maybe on uh, Silver Sunlight, where we, um, we have written an almost a psychedelic lyric, um, but the essence of that was that <clears throat> when people say to me, you know, uh, uh, what advice do you give young musicians? And I say, well, belief in yourself is most important because as one door opens, another one slams in your face and it's your belief in yourself that keeps you moving through those doors until you get to your goal. And Silver Sunlight is a bit like that, but it's said in a very um, psychedelic way that there's a door to choose to go through, but when you choose to go through it, you, uh, you, you see all the new sensations that are there waiting for you you know and and that's then what you do with that that you'll you'll have your success so it's kind of a it, it mirrors that sort of um storyline if you like i don't know if you know that there is an italian band called a uh, blind golem oh yeah man, yeah yes uh, blind yeah. Gol blind golem who was for a long time a uh, uh uriah hip tribute band now they release a, a new cd and, and the music look like Uriah Heep also. But uh, the keyboard player of the band told me that uh, they consider that in your music, the, the word sunrise is very important. Now that you mentioned silver sunrise, I remember this. Tell me, what is the meaning of sunrise in general? In so this, our song, Sun Sunrise, yes. I, th I think it's just a celebration of, of the sunrise, you know. Um, uh, you know, so many people in life can see a sunrise and a sunset and and, and just not recognize its beauty. <laughs> you know, they just walk past it, you know, and or uh, you know, close the blinds, you know, or close the curtains, you know. It's it, but you know, there's a great beauty in it, and the fact that the day is unfolding and the day can unfold any way you want it to unfold, you know. So a sunrise is a beautiful um feeling and 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 an overall experience you know when when you see one you know and uh, i think that's the sort of emotion that we're putting through uh, the song you know there's there's love there's 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 peace there's everything that comes from that um that event if you like that happens every day you know and it's, it's such a shame that so many people pass that over you are most from sunrise i am most from sunset but it doesn't mind is there are beautiful moments during the day. Yes. And tell me, uh, if I think that it was during the lockdown or before that you keep in touch with your fans using uh, YouTube. Are you going to continue uh, talking on YouTube uh, or so? Um, because the tour is quite extensive. We're on our 50th anniversary tour, which is a, a three-hour show. And, and sometimes we're traveling <laughs> seven hours in a day to get to the next country and then doing a three hour show. So it's quite taxing. Um, I don't really have time to fit in all those um, lockdown videos and and uh, Mixed Mondays and uh, uh, Ask Mick and all those sort of things. You know, they're sort of things that I can do comfortably at home, but not, not necessarily out here on the road, you know, because um, every minute is taken up within the heat world, to be honest. <laughs> now that the band has uh, 50 years and a little more. Uh, you have written, I think that maybe more than 150 songs. And tell me now, Mick, that you tell me at the beginning of the interview that you almost write every day, how easy or difficult is writing songs when you already wrote more than 100 songs? No, well, I've never had anything that other people have. They, they say they have writer's block. I, I don't have that, you know. I mean, we travel, I mean, pre-COVID to 62 countries around the world. And if you can't gain inspiration from, from that, you know, you just have to have your eyes open, your antenna high and, um, and soak it all in. You know, there's so much, so much to see and take on board in, in, in everyday life, you know. And then I tend to try and give that all a positive spin, when, when I when I write lyrics and 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 get some positivity out of it, so that the, the listener gains that positivity, 
Um, we're never really negative about our lyrics at all. It's usually uh, very uplifting. And, and I think that's very important, certainly in our music, certainly in people's lives. Yes, now you are in the middle of a tour. Thank you very much for attending me because I know that maybe tonight you have a concert. Oh yeah, well, we've got, well, I've got more interviews after this, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it just gets rolling and rolling and rolling, you know, but there's things I love doing. So um, thank you for your support. You know, it has been marvelous. Yes. So um, for the next years, uh, do you have some plans after the release of the CD? That is a uh, chaos and color. Okay, so kind of after that, well, we're hoping that our agent's now working on putting a tour together for us. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll head out to the summer festivals next year and continue touring, you know, because that's what we love. So uh, we need, to, we, we want to um, play tracks off the Chaos and Colour to as many people as we can live. So um, we'll keep healthy. We'll keep um, hoping that all these things will come to fruition, you know, because we love playing. Perfect, uh, Mick, perfect. This is basically our question because they tell me only 30 minutes because Mix is in the middle of the tour. And I say, that's okay. So <laughs> if you want to say something to say goodbye, this is your moment, Mick. Okay, well, listen, um, we can't wait to come out and play our shows for you because, you know, um, whenever we do come over there, um, the reactions we get are just so, so immense um, and such good feeling that, you know, uh, when we do do a show there, you know, the audience are, are like this and, and we're like this and then we meet together like this and it's electricity. And and, and I think it, it just makes for a magic night every time we, we play over there. So um, we can't wait to come out and play the music for you. New music, old music, any music will be there and uh, we'll have a great time. So you keep on rocking. <laughs> Perfect, Mick. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you keep rocking into the 70s too. Of course. <laughs> That's an order from Mick Box, right? <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Thank my friend. You. Thank you very much. Take bye -bye. care for now, mate. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.